Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on vaporizers and the back bar. The ideal vaporizer. Performance is not affected by changes in fresh gas flow, volume of liquid agent, ambient temperature, ambient pressure, decreased temperature due to vaporization, and changes in pressure due to respiration. It should have a low resistance to gas flow, light, small volatile anesthetic agent liquid requirements, low cost, safe, minimal service requirements, and should be corrosion resistant. Variable Bypass Vaporizers It uses a mechanism that dilutes volatile anesthetic agents to the desired concentration by an adjustable proportion, the splitting ratio of gas that either enters or bypasses a vaporizing chamber. Can be divided into draw over vaporizers and plenum vaporizers. Draw over vaporizers. Advantages Low resistance to gas flow for emergency use in the field, simple design, lightweight, agent non specific, small and inexpensive. Disadvantages include less efficient than plenum vaporizers, performance is affected by decreased temperature from loss of latent heat during vaporization. Mechanism It is situated inside the breathing system. During inspiration, the patient generates sub-atmospheric pressure which pulls volatile anesthetic vapor through the vaporizer into the breathing system. A lever which adjusts the amount of fresh gas which enters the vaporizing chamber is present in many designs. Plenum Vaporizers Features It is intended for unidirectional gas flow. It has high resistance to gas flow and unsuitable for use as draw-over vaporizer and unsuitable to be positioned within the breathing circuit. It is temperature compensated, such as the TEC type. TEC stands for temperature compensated. It is agent-specific, vaporizer out of circuit, efficient, and accurate and safe delivery of dialed concentration of volatile anesthetic can be produced. Components the case with a percentage control dial on the top, it has a filling level indicator, a port for volatile anesthetic agent filling device, anesthetic agent specific connections link the container of the liquid volatile anesthetic agent to the port of the vaporizer. These connections reduces the risk of spillage and environmental pollution and filling of the vaporizer with the wrong agent. Bypass channel. Vaporization chamber. It has wicks or baffles to increase the surface area available for vaporization. Gas is forced through the vaporizer by the pressure of the fresh gas supply. Resistance of a plenum vaporizer may be high enough to prevent its use as a draw over vaporizer. Temperature sensitive valve. It can be a bimetallic strip, bellow device, or metal rod. A bimetallic strip, such as in TEC vaporizers, consists of two different metals bonded together, which has different coefficients of thermal expansion. The splitting ratio is adjusted here. Location of the bimetallic strip. It is inside the vaporization chamber in TEC MK2 and outside the vaporization chamber in TEC MK3, 4, and 5. Bellow devices are used in M and IE. VAPA Master Vaporizer 5 and 6, EMO and Ohio Vaporizers, and Ether Field Bellow is the temperature compensating device used to regulate the valve by shortening with decreased temperature rather than a bimetallic strip. Metal Rod It is used in the Drager Vapor 19 Vaporizers. The metal rod acts to regulate the valve. Back Bar Vaporizers are mounted on the back bar. Interlocking Selector Tech System It is a mechanism that mounts the vaporizer to the back bar. The percentage control dial can't be turned on unless the locking lever of the system is engaged. It prevents more than one vaporizer being used at any one time by use of interlocking extension rods, preventing contamination of the one downstream. 
Fresh gas flow only enters the vaporizer when it is switched on. The select attack block permits the vaporizer to be changed rapidly without interrupting the flow of carrier gas to the patient. Mechanism of action of plenum vaporizer. Calibration of each vaporizer is agent specific. The flow split is located just distal to the entry point of the FGF into the vaporizer and splits fresh gas flow into two streams. The largest stream flows through the bypass channel and the smaller stream, 20% of fresh gas flow, flows through the vaporization chamber. The two gas streams reunite as they leave the vaporizer. Vaporization chamber. The gas stream leaving it is always fully saturated despite changes in fresh gas flow with vapor prior to joining the bypass gas stream. To increase the surface area of contact between the gas stream and the volatile anesthetic, the following may be used. Wicks saturated by inhalational agent, baffles, or by bubbling the carrier gas through the liquid volatile anesthetic. Percentage control dial. It is adjusted to achieve the desired concentration of volatile anesthetic agent. This is achieved by altering the splitting ratio. Vapor concentration supplied by the vaporizer is independent of the fresh gas flow between 0.5 and 15 liters per minute. Compensation for reduction in temperature as loss of latent heat of vaporization during vaporization of the volatile anesthetic agent results in cooling of the agent and reduction in its volatility. To compensate for this, the vapor is made of materials such as copper, which has high density, high specific heat capacity, very high thermal conductivity, and the copper acts as a heat sink to give heat to the anesthetic agent and maintains its temperature. A temperature-sensitive valve. It uses a bimetallic strip in TEC5, consists of two different metals bonded together, which has different coefficients of thermal expansion. It automatically adjusts the splitting ratio as the temperature changes, allowing more flow into the vaporizing chamber as the temperature decreases. Location of the bimetallic strip, as as mentioned above. Measured flow vaporizers. It uses a mechanism that dilutes volatile anesthetic agents to the desired concentration by adding vapor directly into the fresh gas flow. There's fluorine characteristics relevant to vaporizer design. Saturated vapor pressure of desflurane is 664 mm mercury or 89 kPa at 20 degrees Celsius. Desflurane has a boiling point of 23.5 degrees Celsius. Will a plenum vaporizer be used for desflurane? Small changes in theater temperature will cause large changes in SVP and vapor output of desflurane. TEC-6 Vaporizer It is designed specifically for desflurane to combat its issues. TEC stands for Temperature Compensated. Desflurane is heated electrically to 39 degrees Celsius with a resulting pressure of 1550 mercury, approximately 2 bar, 39 degrees Celsius is above the desflurane's boiling point. TEC-6 is mounted on the select attack system. It has a capacity of 450 mL. A warm-up period is necessary to reach 39 degrees Celsius, which lasts 5 to 10 minutes. The vaporizer will not function below 39 degrees Celsius and 2 bar. Fixed restriction orifice position in the fresh gas flow path. FGF does not enter the vaporization chamber. FGF enters the path of the regulated concentration of desflurane vapor. The resulting gas mixture is then delivered to the patient. Differential pressure transducer and pressure regulating valve. Adjust a pressure regulating valve at the outlet of the vaporization chamber. This ensures that the pressure of the carrier gas within the vaporizer is proportional to the gas flow. It senses pressure at the fixed restriction on one side and pressure of the desflurane vapor upstream to the pressure regulating valve on the other side. Purpose Its purpose is to ensure that the pressure of desflurane vapor upstream of the control valve equals the pressure of fresh gas flow at the fixed orifice.
the flow of desperin out of the vaporizing chamber will be proportional to the FGF. The output concentration is made independent of the FGF rate. Percentage control dial. It is a rotary valve. It adjusts a second resistor which controls the flow of desperin vapor into the FGF and thus the output concentration. The dial calibration range is 0 to 18%. Auditory and visual malfunction alarms exist. There is a 9 volt battery as a backup electrical power should the mains electricity fails. Aladdin cassette. Aladdin cassette vaporizers behaves as both a variable bypass and measured flow vaporizer. It is designed to overcome the many problems faced by vaporizers. It regulates anesthetic vapor concentration with electro-pneumatic proportional flow valves controlled by microprocessors. It is used in Datex of Meda Anesthesia Delivery Unit and GE Isis Anesthesia Workstations. Mechanism of Action It consists of two parts, agent-specific vaporizing chamber, the cassette, and central processing unit, the CPU. The throttle valve is controlled by the CPU and adjust the gas flow leaving the vaporizing chamber with adjustments taking into account the prevailing gas flow rate. Carrier gas. Saturation is achieved by wicks consisting of synthetic lamellae with metal plates. Composition of fresh gas flow. CPU algorithms take into account the composition of fresh gas flow to minimize the effect of different carrier gas viscosities on output concentrations of the anesthetic agents. Gas flow rate measurement. It is based on the physical principle of a pressure decrease proportional to gas flow over a fixed resistance. Temperature compensation. The CPU calculates the amount of agent added to the bypass gas by taking into account several variables such as liquid agent temperature, vapor pressure calculations, total pressure within the cassette, vapor concentration calculations. Temperature stabilization is achieved by metal plates and a fan. The metal plates has high heat capacity and high heat conductivity and act as the heat sink. Fans are located beneath the cassette, transfers heat from the workstation electronics to the cassette if the liquid anesthetic agent is less than 18 degrees Celsius. Back pressure. The adverse effects of ventilator back pressure is minimized by using a mixing chamber, which is distinct from the cassette, where bypass or vaporizing chamber gas flows unite. Vaporizer filling devices. These are agent-specific. They are geometrically coded to fit the filling pot of the specific vaporizer or anesthetic agent supply bottle. These specific connections reduces the risk of spillage and filling of the vaporizer with the wrong agent. Safety filling system ensures that the vaporizer cannot overflow. The valves will only open when the agent filler is fully inserted into the filling pot to prevent spillage. Anti-pollution cap is a new design feature which allows the filler to be left fitted to the bottle indefinitely between users to prevent vaporization of the agent from the supply bottle. It eliminates air locks, speeds up vaporizer filling, and ensures that the bottle is completely empty. Color coding. Red for halothane, orange for enfluorine, purple for isofluorine, yellow for sevofluorine, and blue for desfluorine. Potential problems with vaporizers Concentration of an anesthetic in the gas mixture emerging from the outlet pot depends on several factors. Calibration The saturated vapor pressure In a closed container, evaporation will proceed until there are as many molecules returning to the liquid as there are escaping. At this point, the vapor is said to be saturated. The pressure of the vapor, usually expressed in millimeters mercury, is called the saturated vapor pressure. The higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy each molecule has, and the more molecules can escape the surface of the liquid, and the saturated vapor pressure is higher. If a liquid is open to air, the vapor pressure of that liquid equals its partial pressure, along with the other constituents of the air. Boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. 
a highly volatile agent has a higher saturated vapor pressure and is present at higher concentration than a less volatile agent. The SVP in KPA at 20 degrees Celsius for sevoflurane is 22, amflurane 23, halothane 32, isoflurane 32, desflurane 89, and nitrous oxide 5200. The SVP of volatile agents at 20 degrees Celsius are usually many times greater than that required to produce anesthesia. Vaporizer designs have to overcome this phenomenon to avoid overdosing of anesthetic agent by having a means to provide accurate concentrations of anesthetic agents to the patient. Maximum achievable concentration in volume percent. For sevoflurane, SVP of sevoflurane is 22.7 kPa. Its maximum achievable concentration is 22.4%. Desflurane. SVP of desflurane is 89.2 kPa. Its maximum achievable concentration is 88%. Vaporizers have to be designed and calibrated to each individual agent having deferring SVP to allow the addition of a controlled amount of volatile anesthetic agent to the fresh gas flow. Consequences of filling a different volatile anesthetic agent into a vaporizer not calibrated for it. If a volatile agent with a high SVP such as desflurane is used in a sevoflurane vaporizer, vapor output will be high. If a volatile agent with a lower SVP such as sevoflurane is used in an isoflurane vaporizer, the vapor output will be low. Even if the SVP differences are small, the effect will still be significant. For example, isoflurane with a SVP of 32.5 kPa in a halothane vaporizer with a SVP of 32.1 kPa delivers a concentration that is 25-50% to 50 higher than is dialed up. Flow Rate Dependence Modern plenum and measured flow vaporizers function independently of flow rates between 0.5 and 15 liters per minute. They deliver less than the dialed concentration outside this range. Flow characteristics through the vaporizing chamber. Poor design, such as this simple type of drawover vaporizer, gas passing through the vaporizing chamber may fail to mix completely with the vapor as a result of streaming. Tilting the vaporizer. Anti-spill mechanism is present in modern vaporizers. Liquid anesthetic agent will not enter the bypass channel even if the vaporizer is tipped upside down. Otherwise, dangerously high concentrations of anesthetic agent could be delivered to the patient in cases of agent spillage into the bypass channel, such as in earlier designs. It is recommended that the vaporizer is purged with a fresh gas flow of 5 liters per minute for 30 minutes with the percentage control dial set at 5% if tilting has occurred. Risk of leaks If the O-rings are removed accidentally from the selector tech system, such as during changes of vaporizers, leaks may occur. Overfilling Delivery of dangerously high concentrations of volatile anesthetic agents can occur if the vaporizer is overfilled as the volatile agent may enter directly into the bypass chamber. Pumping effect. This describes the condition where cyclical increases and decreases in pressure at the back bar generated by the ventilator forces gas back into the vaporizing chamber and saturated gas in the vaporizing chamber back into the bypass channel with increased concentration of delivered volatile anesthetic in the forward gas flow of the next cycle. This occurred with minute volume divider ventilators which are rarely used in the modern era. Mechanisms for compensation of the pumping effect includes long inlet port, flow restrictors, equal volumes of the bypass channel and the vaporizing chamber, and spring-loaded non-return valve. Long inlet port into the vaporizer prevents the bypass channel from getting contaminated by the retrograde flow from the vaporizing chamber. Flow restrictors located downstream of the vaporizer maintains the vaporizer at a higher pressure than that in the ventilator. Equal volumes of the bypass channel and vaporizing chamber results in equal expansion and compression of gases. Spring-loaded non-return valve prevents retrograde flow from pumping effect located downstream of vaporizers either at the back bar or near the common gas outlet. It opens when the pressure in the back bar exceeds 35 kPa to protect the flow meter and vaporizer components from damaging higher pressures. 
pressurizing effect. When gas from an excessively pressurized vaporizer, such as a large vaporizer chamber at high flows, expands to atmospheric pressure at the common gas outlet, the effective concentration of the anesthetic agent will be lowered. Pressure relief valve if common gas outlet is blocked. It is located downstream of the vaporizer and opens at about 35 kPa. It prevents damage to the flow meters or vaporizers if the common gas outlet is blocked. Corrosion of the bimetallic strip. The bimetallic strip has been in the bypass channel since the TEC MK3 and it can be corroded by oxygen and inhalational agent in the vaporizing chamber. Effects of changes in barometric pressure. Effects of high altitude or hyperbaric conditions on the variable bypass vaporizer. The amount of vapor carried by the fresh gas flow is a function of the saturated vapor pressure of the agent and the atmospheric pressure. At high altitude, the SVP of the volatile agent is unchanged, atmospheric pressure decreases, the actual output of vapor in volumes percent increases, partial pressure of the volatile agent is unchanged. The vaporizer can be used in the same way at high altitude as at sea level because it is the partial pressure of the agent and not the concentration that is responsible for anesthesia. This also applies to vaporizers used under hyperbaric conditions. For example, at 6000 meter height where the barometric pressure is 380 millimeters mercury or 50% of sea level barometric pressure, the vapor output doubles. 3% zero fluorine as dialed up will deliver 6%. Be it at 6000 meters or at sea level, the partial pressure is the same at 22.8 millimeters mercury. At hyperbaric conditions, SVP of the volatile agent is unchanged, atmospheric pressure increases, actual output of vapor in volumes percent decreases, partial pressure of the volatile agent is unchanged. The vaporizer can be used in the same way at normal barometric pressures because it is the partial pressure of the agent and not the concentration that is responsible for anesthesia. Effects of high altitude on measured flow vaporizers. The TEC-6 vaporizer heats desflurane to 39 degrees Celsius to generate a vapor pressure of 200 kPa inside the chamber regardless of what the ambient atmospheric pressure might be. Actual output of vapor in volumes percent will be the same as the dialed up percent regardless of altitude. 10% of desflurane as dialed up will deliver 10% at any altitude. An alveolar partial pressure at sea level of 76 millimeters mercury will be half to 38 millimeters mercury at 6,000 meters. Thus, the dial up concentration will have to be increased at high altitude to maintain adequate partial pressure for anesthesia. Effects of high altitude on Bordon pressure gorges. Bordon pressure gorges will overread at high altitude as they are calibrated at atmospheric pressure at sea level. This error may be of little clinical significance as the pressures in the gas cylinders are much higher relative to ambient atmospheric pressure. Effects of high altitude on flow meters. Standard variable orifice constant differential flow meters calibrated at sea level atmospheric pressure will underread by about 20% at an altitude of 3000 meters. This is because of the lower density of atmospheric gases. Position of vaporizers in the circuit. The vaporizer can be positioned outside of the circle or inside the circle in a circle system. Vaporizer outside circle. Plenum vaporizers are usually located outside the circle as it has high internal resistance. Positive upstream pressure drives the gas. It will deliver volatile agent from the back bar of the anesthetic machine it is unsuitable for use within the breathing system. Altering depth of anesthesia in circle systems. Large changes in dialed concentrations are achieved very slowly at low flows in a circle system. Increased fresh gas flow rather than vapor concentration to effect a more rapid change in the depth of anesthesia as dialed concentrations will be achieved quicker with high fresh gas flow. Draw over vaporizers are usually located inside the circle system. 
The ventilator or patient's spontaneous respiration generates sub-atmospheric pressure distal to the vaporizer and draws the gas through the system. Draw-over vaporizers have minimal resistance to flow and can be used within a circle. Risk of delivering very high concentrations of volatile anesthetic agents. The vapor concentration rises at low flows. Anesthetic vapor is being added to each inspiration at low flows. The risk of delivering very high concentrations of volatile agent is increased if the minute volume is large. Preservatives in inhalational agents. Thymol, which is present in halothane, accumulates in the wicks of vaporizers and interferes with the function of vaporizers and can cause the bimetallic strip to stick. Enfluorine, isofluorine, sevoflurane, and desflurane do not contain preservatives. Monitoring. Accurate gas analysis of inspired and anhydro anesthetic agent concentrations minimizes the risk of underdosing and overdosing. Splitting ratio. The flow rate of gas through the vaporizing chamber, FV, in comparison with that through the bypass, F minus FV. Variable bypass vaporizers, such as plenum and drawover vaporizers, controls the output anesthetic vapor concentration by regulation of the splitting ratio. Temperature. The temperature of the liquid anesthetic agent determines its saturated vapor pressure. Modern vaporizers use bimetallic strips or bellow mechanisms to compensate for changes in temperature of the anesthetic liquid. Duration of use. As the liquid anesthetic agent evaporates over time, Loss of latent heat of vaporization results in decrease in temperature, decrease in SVP, and decreased concentration of anesthetic in the mixture leaving the exit port. Surface area of the anesthetic agent in the vaporizer. If the surface area is inadequate, the fresh gas flow passing through the vaporizing chamber may fail to be fully saturated with anesthetic vapor and risk inadequate dose of anesthesia. These are my references. Thank you.